Well then, Bunny Wade Williams. Yes. It is time once again, Maxwell. 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 I'm trying to do the podcast here, okay? I know you're excited because there's a camera, okay? But but try and shh, okay? Because we're we're going into a new bit here. It's time. It's time once again to go back through history with yet another essentially true installment of Steve's historical approximations. Yes. And this is where, for the, for those of you who are uninitiated, Steve's historical approximation is is when I get a bit of history that is possibly unknown or not that well known, and reword it in my own voice my own vision yes and this week we are going back to the beach with a story about the mob a world famous singer and the star of the beach girls and the monster big john hall the actor big john hall Big John Hall. Very excited about that. This is a crazy story, and I've been sitting on it for a while. Really excited to be telling this story. We did the movie The Beach Girls and the Monster recently as a homework assignment yes. here on the Pope on Film podcast. So uh, the film was written, produced, directed, and starring uh, actor John Hall. Big John Hall. He was an actor, but he was more than that. He was a jack of all trades, if you recall. He was an actor, inventor, cameraman, yes. sword swallower, cow masturbator, yes. professional horse massager. Yes. Robot gynecologist. New Raymond personally. Yes. Yes. Semi, he was a semi professional Willem Dafoe impersonator, which was weird because it was the 50s and no one knew who he was. That's just <laughs> how that's just how ahead of the times Big John Hall yeah. was. He was like, Trust me, this is gonna be big one day. <laughs> yeah, he was a traveling bathroom attendant. She would go. <laughs> Bathroom yeah, you know, attendant. you know when you when you go to like a fancy place and there's a guy in the bathroom giving you like mints and gum and yeah. spraying you with Drakkar Noir. Yeah, he would travel to different bathrooms. He was a traveling bathroom attendant. That makes me think of something that I'm finding kind of frightening. Okay. That leads me to think that there is a company. A company that's just bathroom attendants. Yeah. So yeah. if you need a bathroom attendant for your restaurant, you just call this company and they make sure that they have a guy in the bathroom every night. But then this one calls in sick and this one calls in. So you, you go to other places. Yeah. For their bathrooms. Yeah. yeah. A whole fucking industry of people just sitting in bathrooms. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think we should work on this. That would make take your kid to work day really fucking weird. Very weird. Yeah, very weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big John Hall, he was an inventor. He invented a lot of things. He invented hepatitis C. Uh, that was that was a breakthrough. That was him. He invented yawns. Okay, so that was impressive. He was the he was the first person to invent yawns. No <laughs> one had yawned before. Big John Hall was an amazing guy. He wasn't just an actor. He was a swan wrangler. A he was a professional swan wrangler. wrangler. No, but here's the thing. You probably think that he wrangled swans. No, he made Wrangler jeans for swans. <laughs> he was literally a swan wrangler. Yes. It's very difficult to make jeans for swans. They have weird-ass legs. They do. Yeah, they do. They do. So it's impressive. Uh, one may even say an art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the first person in America to bite his toenails. 
<laughs> he and built that the fed took off. Oh yeah. He yeah. built the vault. He built the vault that they keep the Colonel secret recipe in. He was a real Renaissance man. Uh, it, it, yes, it does sound yeah. it. Yeah, and who but his knew? Big, but his big star period was in the '30s and '40s when he was a real star in Hollywood, a leading man. And then in the '50s, he starred in his own TV show called Ramar of the Jungle. So Big John Hall really is one of those big. One time big name stars who very few people remember nowadays. And it's sad, but it's sad to say, but when, when all the baby boomers die out, then the memories of Big John Hall will go with them. Sadly, Big John Hall will only be remembered as a trivia footnote. Hey, gang, it's Zach. Ever notice how one person has two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? Why is that? Today, we'll be talking about the strange story of actor John Hall today on Annoying White Guy Internet Show. <laughs> That's my new YouTube show. I'm going to be Whiteface. <laughs> What's up, YouTubers? It's Zach. That's my new idea for a YouTube show. Want to watch me have a manic episode while I play a video game on YouTube? And you would do that in whiteface? Yeah, no, I've got to be a white person. I've got to be a white if I'm going to have my own YouTube show. I love I'm it. Have you, to be a white person. Can you score a blonde wig? Maybe. You find weird shit like that in Goodwill and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yes. Give it like yeah. a Beach Boy comb over. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm finally going to be short uh, a white blonde hair. I think this is genius. I would yeah. so I would I I would so be advertising that. Yeah. <laughs> the key to having your own show on YouTube is when you first start the show, you have to be as loud and annoying as possible. Yeah. There is no YouTube show where you go. Good evening and welcome to another episode of the Steve Show. I am your host, Steve. It's always. What's up, YouTubers? Yeah. You know? It is. What's up? It's Zach! Today we're going to be playing Five Nights at Freddy's 8! You know? Because if you start with that soft tone on YouTube, you know, you're going to lose people immediately, regardless of what you're talking about. You know? Yeah. 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 You know, if 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 you came in with an introduction like that, and you were like, Hello. Welcome to Dildos and Nightmares. On this episode, Dildos and Nightmares? we have a very said? special guest. We are having... Yes, Dildos and... You'll still tune out. Yeah, yeah. Even if it's Dildos and Nightmares, that tone, you, you lose people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the story of Big John Hall, this particular story about actor John Hall, takes place in 1944. Yeah. Big John Hall was riding high at the time. I, 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 had... I, 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 hate, I hate to interrupt. I'm sorry, but I can't believe okay. that that Ramtha of the Jungle or whatever he was called, I can't believe I've missed that. Like, I have totally never, yeah. ever, ever heard of that. And I was a huge Tarzan fan when I was a kid. Yeah, that sounds like some pretty Tarzan-y stuff. Johnny Wallet Rice Ball like a motherfucker, baby, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um we need to cover a Tarzan film now. <laughs> um My dad always made me watch what Tarzan in New York. He always used to make yes. me watch that whenever it was on like AMC back when they showed actual good movies and not like shit. And and like this is see, this is it. And Tarzan was okay, like like, do you raise any kind of eyebrow if I say that I was a Tarzan fan? No. No. Why would anybody? But I bet you if we go back and watch them now, they are racist as all kinds oh, of Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. All of those Tarzan movies. All Just of those like Tarzan. from top to bottom. Yeah. You know, that's that's why a lot of times I'll say I, I, I am a racist. I am soaked with this stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and like 
that shit's that shit's hard to get rid of because it's just habit in a lot of ways. It's hard to get rid of, regardless of how stupid you know it is. You know, there's just a mental re- knee-jerk reaction to certain things because of all the crap that was put into us. Yeah. You know? Like, I learned recently, like, this this is vaguely related, but I learned recently on the radio that there were certain Indian tribes that owned slaves. Um, no, no. Yeah, yeah. That blew my mind because... Because uh, the white man hated Native Americans. So imagine Native Americans going, the white man hates us, the white man hunts us and kills us. They do not see us as people and they drive us from our land. But at least we're not these guys. (laughs) At least we're not these guys down here. (laughs) Hey, Kunta, your name is Toby now. Well, um, um, that just um, breaks my heart. That breaks my heart. I think Jesus we would... Christ, Black Lives Matter. <laughs> God damn. I think we would have to do more research on that because I'm sure when they were being attacked and destroyed and everything, it's hard to keep it's 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 hard to fight battles like that and and keep an eye on your slaves at the same time. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, that's a good point. I'm I'm just pointing that out. But no, yeah, that's that's the thing is like is like we get shown Indians and we are still see there's a racist knee jerk reaction, okay? Yeah, well, without even thinking about it. The thing is that it. slavery wasn't um, only done by white people. Yeah, yeah, people all over yeah. the world have had slaves. It's in yeah. the so, Bible, it's damn in it! Bible, damn it! <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! So yeah, so when when the uh, a tribe would go and raid another tribe. What were they going for? What were they going for? Uh, MacGuffins. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Damn, you're good. Yeah. So, but but so anyway, and like, anyway, we get we see one depiction of Native Americans. Okay. Yeah. When it was a hugely diverse culture. I mean, they were all over the fucking continent. Yeah, they're all different cultures. There, there were, there, there were uh, very warlike tribes, and yeah, they were, yeah, they were yeah. ones dedicated to peace, and you know, all yeah. of that. Yeah. Yes. They yeah, the yeah. The Comanches were Always. the bad ones. Always, <laughs> always. So, so it's yes, nineteen. 19- I, I can't believe I missed that. With um, with what 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 was he in again? What what was the name of that show? Ramar of the Jungle. Ramar of the Jungle. Like I, I would think that that would the ring 50s. a bell. Yeah. Have yeah. you heard of it before the research? Nope. Oh my god, nope, this is no, almost no. like a quest for people to find evidence. Maybe he was just fluffing up his resume. I I, I haven't even tried to look for it or anything. We have to find evidence of this actually existing. You're live on yes. Facebook? Yeah, I'm live on Facebook, because this is a really good part of the show. What? <laughs> Lauren says hi. She wrote, I like how Max is just randomly falling on the bed in the background. I told him to get out of my bed. I told him too. I told him to stop jumping. Get out of my room. Don't come back. He wasn't really jumping. He was falling, but still, it's the same thing. What a bitch. I don't don't know if she's watching anymore, but but anyway. Oh, well, you are. What a bitch. (laughs) Are they they hearing both sides of the conversation? Um, I believe they are. Yeah. I believe they are because I've got I've got the the phone that's recording oh, me, they, the podcast they're... right next to the the what? Nothing. What I did they do? Uh, I mean, you're just getting angry. No, no you'll beat I me. I I'll win. Gonna, I was going to tell you how amazing dinner looks, and I'm so ready for it. Nice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I made I made homemade chicken and dumplings, and it looks amazing, and I'm so ready. But the dumplings have to cook, so I've got uh, I've got a little gotcha. bit of time. 
Jeannie, uh, Jeannie we, makes meals like that. We, we had to change our dinner plans, though, because I totally forgot that tonight was you guys are doing the podcast. Sorry. So, okay. <laughs> Steve was like, we're doing, it, we're doing the podcast tonight. And I was like, on Supernatural Saturday? Really? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm supposed to be here for this podcast, Steve. Come on. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. He wasn't feeling good on Thursday. I was so not feeling yeah. good on I Thursday. I hurt so bad. I couldn't stand up straight. Okay, I'm gonna go it hurt so much. I I I I I I hope the joking alleviated the tension. Yes. Yes. But really, how can I not take shots at that? No, no, it's understood. It's understood. So it's 1944. Thank you. Thank you. It it. In in relation to this week's movie, okay, yes. and and I know you're still in the middle of a bit. I'm sorry, but in it's relation okay. to the movie, when you said you were having intense intestinal disturbance, I forget how you put it. Uh, yeah, I was like, oh, okay, so you got the shits. This reminds me <laughs> of this reminds me of this movie. It's the subterranean currents. Yeah, it's the fucking ley lines, bitch. Just because you say that doesn't make it less ridiculous. Science, science, science. No, it was probably the electromagnetic currents. The yeah, electro- yes. the, what, the EMPs. Yeah, it was probably the, the electromagnetic pulses. Oh, it's yeah. the electromagnetic pulses. That's everything. Dude, I warn you, that this is was everything. a bad movie. Yeah. Oh. It's so good. You look I for, love it. So you look much. for you look for ley lines the same way you look for ghosts with the same device. Yeah, yeah, yeah. same thing. Oh same my thing. god, I fucking love this. Okay. But we're not oh, at the oh, movie. Yeah. Yet. We're not at the movie yeah. yet. Sorry, we're I had Steve's historical approximations. I thought that was a dangerous place to go to, but I had yeah, to get that. Yeah, out. yeah, no, no. You start talking about this week's movie, and we're we're going to be here forever. Yeah. So it's 1944. Yes. Uh, Big John Hall, the actor, he was riding high at the time. He had a successful contract with Universal. He was under contract with Universal for about a decade, and he had just starred in a big movie. He was in a biopic of Kit Carson. Okay. So, so in 1944, Big John Hall, he's freaking huge. Huge, I say huge. He's just walking around. I'm John Hall, bitches. <laughs> I can do anything. I'm John Hall. So, so it's August 5th, 1944. An actor, Big John Hall, he's freaking partying. All right? Yeah. He's partying. This event that we're talking about is eventually known as the Battle of the Balcony. Like it's a pay-per-view main event or something. <laughs> Big John Hall, The Undertaker, The Battle of the Balcony. <laughs> yes. Big John Hall, when I see you at SummerSlam, at the Battle of the Balcony. <laughs> so, so John Hall is living large, all Ric Flair style. He yeah. walks into a nightclub. Uh, he walks into a nightclub uh, in L.A. He, all Ric Flair style. He's wearing a sparkly robe. Yeah. Name John Hall. You know, in, in a in a sequence, he comes in. I'm Big John Hall, limousine riding, jet flying, kiss stealing, name son of a gun. <laughs> Woo! Big John Hall. So, yeah, Big John Hall is big. But at the time, remember 1944, yeah. there was one name that was definitely bigger than Big John Hall. And that name is Tommy freaking Dorsey. Tommy Dorsey? Tommy Dorsey, legendary musician, band leader, and in my mind at least, Tommy Dorsey played at every World War II battle. Yes. In my mind, he literally traveled to every battle in World War II. Yes. Like, oh, now we need to go to France. Hurry, let's go to France, guys. Okay, the battle's just starting. Uh, uh, do, I, I, do, 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 do. Okay, now we gotta go to Normandy. Come on, guys. <laughs> and they're running with their instruments to the next battle at World War II. I do have a fondness for swing music. Yeah. 
Okay, so we finally made sure. it to Normandy. We finally made it to Normandy. The bombs are about to go. One, two, three, four. Do 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 Okay, what's the next battle? Yes, honey. Could you reach over and unplug my cord? It's the one against in the wall. Yes. I I have no idea. Okay, how about you move and I'll do it. Okay. You're gonna be. Am I? I don't know. So, so I'm picturing them. I am picturing them being pushed out of a big airplane. Yeah, and parachutes yeah. coming up, and they're in their exact band position. You know, so yeah. like, like you are strapped to your drum kit, coming down, so that you can hit the fucking ground playing. It's yeah. war, god damn it. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> that is exactly <laughs> what happens. Yes. Yeah. That's me, I miss you. So to Tommy Dorsey, he's on the Sunset Strip, this nightclub that he's at. He's at the Sunset Strip and he's partying hard. Okay. Uh Tommy Dorsey is on the Sunset Strip. He's at a club. He's partying hard with his second wife. Apparently, Tommy Dorsey. So apparently, can you give me a beer? I could. Okay. Will you? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So Tommy Dorsey apparently. No, I'm horrible. Oh, I, I, I mean, I mean, I can if you want to fail. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Apparently, Tommy Dorsey was a notorious drunk, and he had been drinking hard. He had been drinking for like over eight hours. He had been drinking nonstop. So so then Tommy Dorsey, he's been drinking for eight hours. And then Tommy Dorsey's all, hey, guys, let's take this party back to my place. He lived nearby in a fancy ass rich apartment complex on the Sunset Strip. Yeah. Needless to say, he's like on the fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh floor. Uh, I'm not sure which floor, but it's high up and he's on a balcony. OK, a balcony that that's that's a, a, obviously an important part of this so a crap ton of people are partying at tommy dorsey's place and you guessed it one of them is our boy actor big john hall yes big john hall I- invented in the, the, in the robe with the sequins yeah in the robe with the sequins like yes. uh, rick flair and uh, and uh, i am also picturing he's got two bitches okay Thank you, honey. What you want to show me a picture? Oh, yeah. Go ahead okay. And talk. Okay. All right. Destiny says she loves you. Oh, I love you, Destiny. So they're partying. So that's they're that's drinking. that's it. He's he's got two bitches with him. That's how I see him. He would come in the room, one on each arm, in his robe. Yes, Big John Hall. Nice. That does look good. Eleanor. Eleanor. Oh, I call her Dumplin. We're having dumpling. We're eating it tonight. We're eating Eleanor tonight. That's good. That's oh, good. we're eating Eleanor tonight. That that'll teach her for screaming during the podcast, right? So they're at Tommy Dorsey's place. They're partying. <laughs> Tommy Dorsey is righteously shit faced at this point, and apparently, not only not Tommy Dorsey a notorious drunk. He's also a violent drunk. Oh. So the party is winding down. So the nerdy boys started it. Yeah. Is what we're suspecting here. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Not, well, 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 here's, here's how it goes down. So the party is winding down. Everybody is starting to leave. John Hall's like, I'm going to be leaving now. I'm John Hall. This I say that a lot. I'm John Hall, and I'm leaving the party now. Tommy yes. Dorsey, I'm give you a handshake goodbye let me shake your hand i will see you later goodbye and then he goes to give tommy dorsey's wife a goodbye hug as he was leaving okay tommy dorsey goes ape shit because of this okay keep in mind though it was a hollywood hug okay gotcha Just gotcha saying. So Tommy Dorsey's been drinking for like 10, 12, 14 hours. He's a violent, he's a notorious violent drunk. Tommy Dorsey 
sees actor John Hall giving his wife a goodbye hug, goes apeshit, grabs a, the nearest beer bottle and smashes it over Tommy Doors over John Hall's face. Okay. Tommy Dorsey instantly breaks Big John Hall's nose open with the beer bottle. The two, <laughs> the two start having a hardcore match. Furniture is flying, steel chairs, Crash Holly and Al Snow show up. Yeah. With thumbtacks. It's a hardcore match, is what I'm saying. They're having a hardcore match. The other party guests start chanting, Lucha! Ah! And then the fight ends up on the balcony. The balcony, which, as you remember, is on the Sunset fucking Strip. <laughs> sure, it's late as hell, but even at 3 a.m., there's freaking looky loops. Yeah. Even at 3 a.m., there are still people on the Sunset fucking Strip because it's the Sunset fucking Strip. Even in 1944... <laughs> There's still some weirdos on the Sunset Strip. Okay? <laughs> so imagine their surprise when it's like, oh, that club was so nice. We should go home. Well, first, let's have a walk on the Sunset Strip. Yeah, let's have a walk. Oh, it's such a nice night. I'm so happy that we went out. This is such a nice night. Look at the stars. Are those the two most famous people in America covered in blood fighting on that balcony up there? <laughs> it's like, wait, so you're just walking down the street on the Sunset Strip and two of the nation's biggest stars are yelling and screaming in a bloody battle five stories above you. This is basically tabloid porn. Yes. Danny but, DeV but what I'm also wondering, okay... Is I have yep. kind of seen a lot of fights on balconies in movies. And like right around that same time period. You know, movies yep. from that era. Yeah. Were they poking fun? Was that like an inside joke? Uh, yes. In fact, the Battle of the Balcony inspires one major piece of cinematic history. Okay. Which we'll get to a bit later in the story. A major bit of cinematic history comes from this story. Okay. So, um, basically, this is tabloid porn. Danny DeVito's character in L.A. Confidential masturbates to the Battle of the Balcony. <laughs> Off the record, on the QT, and very hush-hush. These two guys, actor John Hall and musician Tommy Dorsey, they are huge. Imagine you and I are walking down the street and suddenly, wait a second, that can't be Justin Bieber beating up Tom Hanks. Yeah. <laughs> that can't be, oh my God, it is. Why is Justin Bieber fighting Tom Hanks? And you just see like Justin Bieber's covered in blood and then just, fuck you, Bieber, I'm Tom fucking Hanks. I will eat you alive! <laughs> That's basically the story. Yeah. So, they're fighting on the balcony. Eventually, Tommy Dorsey gets the upper hand in the fight. So, Tommy Dorsey has actor John Hall against the railing, and Tommy Dorsey is all, I'm gonna fucking throw your ass off of this goddamn balcony. He says, as he's trying to push him off the balcony, Royal Rumble style, yeah. you know, over the top rope. He's literally in the process of trying to kill actor John Hall. <laughs> but big John Hall gets the upper hand in this match. He gets a reversal. He grabs Tommy Dorsey by like the back of the head by his hair. And he says really loudly, if I'm going off this balcony, you're fucking going with me. <laughs> so now they're both about to go off the fucking balcony yes but here's where here's where this is the amazing part we haven't gotten to like the amazing part that here's is where, but just picture no picture that in your head a second okay that uh -huh. is as good an action scene as it gets oh hell yeah for, for any hell movie because yeah. now, oh, yeah. now here is the plan for these two guys 
I'm going to throw you off the balcony before you throw me off the balcony. You know? So either the uh, one goes over the balcony, the other one goes over the balcony, both of them go over the balcony. You know, it's a win. Yeah. You know, it's just an action movie win. All right. Oh, hell yeah. And if you get really lucky, only one of them gets, goes over the balcony and the other one is dangling for his life. Yes. Yes. Off of you the gotta balcony. Have, you got to have the dangling part. Yeah. yeah. But, but we haven't even gotten to the complicated part yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's where it gets complicated because as the fight is raging on, Mrs. Tommy Dorsey makes an important decision. She decides to go next door and get help. Okay. I'm going to go. I'm Mrs. Tommy Dorsey. What's and your she name? Got not... Liberace. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm going to go next door and get help. Apparently, next door was a good, good friend of the Dorsey family. Um, his name was Alan Smiley, big friend of the Dorseys. And by friend, okay. I mean he was Bugsy Siegel's right hand man. <laughs> Apparently, Tommy Dorsey lived next door to Bugsy Siegel's muscle. Yeah. Noted mobster muscle man, Alan Smiley. Dramatic music. Da, da, da. Yes. Now, here is the suspiciously convenient part of the story. Apparently, every party guest said to the police and the press that literally everyone in the party, because the party was winding down, and and they they go looking. The police go looking for uh, uh what is it uh witnesses. Oh, yeah. isn't this interesting? Suspiciously, everyone was in the parking garage getting their car to leave. <laughs> and literally, the only people left in the apartment were Tommy Dorsey, Mrs. Tommy Dorsey, Big John Hall, and noted mobster Alan Smiley. And once the <laughs> oh, how convenient! Isn't that a convenient part of the story? Yeah. And then, and then, once the party goers heard the commotion, that's when they went from the parking garage back into the apartment, into the elevator, rode the elevator up, got out of the elevator, went to the apartment, and that is when they saw John Hall covered in blood. Because someone, and of course it is unknown who, mm -hmm. but someone used what may have been a surgeon's scalpel to slash John Hall's face and neck so many times that he needed 50 stitches and emergency facial reconstruction surgery. Oh, that is brutal. It's so brutal. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like, if a mobster does this to you... You can't call 911. You can't call the police. So John Hall drove himself to the emergency room. <laughs> he had to get over I'm, 50 I'm getting a really I'm more. getting a really repo the genetic opera vibe here. Yeah. He yeah. had to get facial reconstruction surgery just to keep his face together. In fact, um for weeks and weeks after he got messed up um, uh, Destiny may or may not be watching this live stream, Deanna, so, uh, okay. yeah. No, um, Auntie sent me in here because we're about to watch Stonehenge Apocalypse. You guys are going to watch Stonehenge Apocalypse? Yeah, That's great. By the time you guys are done, it'll probably be time for us to talk about Stonehenge yes. Apocalypse. Deanna, you should get in on this episode of the podcast because we'll be talking about she Stonehenge Apocalypse. She wanted everyone to come out for live reactions. Live reactions? Uh, no, because I've got a lot of of, of, uh, of uh, parts of the show to do, All right. so I appreciate that, but I want you guys to start watching it immediately, okay? Okay. Start watching it immediately, right. and, then, uh, and then we'll convene. I'll be back. Okay. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. For yeah. weeks and weeks after his emergency facial reconstruction surgery... Big time actor John Hall had to wear a nose guard to keep his nose in place. Ooh. That's that is where they got Chinatown. That is where they got Chinatown. Jake's nose guard. Uh, 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 in Chinatown, he's wearing that nose guard 
That's yeah. from John Hall and the Battle of the Balcony. Boom! Trivia. Wow. And somehow now it sounds vaguely familiar. Yeah. Apparently the Battle of the Balcony is a big-ass deal. So here's the real interesting part of the story, though. Despite the fact that a crap ton of people were at the party, no one at the party claimed to have witnessed the fight or saw how John Hall was cut. One party goer actually suggested that perhaps Tommy Dorsey's wife accidentally did it. Yeah, that must have been it. There's no other logical explanation. <laughs> it must have been accidentally Mrs. Tommy Dorsey and not the noted mobster. Anyway, bye. <laughs> No one came forward with any pertinent info, except for a young woman named Jane Churchill. Okay. She was at the party. She was a young woman. She apparently had the had balls. Okay. Because while everyone else suddenly well, had group again, amnesia. Hollywood party. Well, yeah. While everyone else had group amnesia, she was all like, oh, yeah, Alan Smiley cut John Hall's face up and then told all of us at the party not to tell anyone or Bugsy Siegel will come and get us. That's exactly what happened. My name is Jane Churchill. <laughs> yeah, a bold woman, brave, strong. Anywho, a while later, what a strange coincidence. Okay. Jane Churchill's legs and knees were broken in a car accident, guys. It was just me being clumsy, a clumsy woman. Oops! You know how <laughs> women are driving. I was just driving, and I accidentally got into a car accident that broke my arms and legs and especially knees. Oops! Oh, and while I have you all here, I would like to recant what I said earlier. I was drinking, and I didn't witness what happened. I'm not sure why I lied. I guess that's just me being a woman. Anyway, uh, I take back everything I said. Bye, guys! Hobble, hobble, hobble away. Oh, man. Why is this story not more widely known? I don't know. Because this is interesting you, as shit. I'll tell you why the story isn't as as well known. Um, this is one of the most infamous Hollywood fights ever. No charges were ever filed. The DA was upset that nobody would come forward with information about the Battle of the Balcony. So he said, despite the, we the fact that we have no witnesses, no pertinent information, this crime cannot go unpunished. So I will go on with the case on my <laughs> own. I will take on. It's unknown whether uh, this succeeded, but I'm assuming that it didn't succeed because this story. And I again, I think this is the reason why this story isn't widely known. This all happened about a year before Bugsy Siegel took a look at a desert wasteland called Las Vegas and said, guys, hear me out. I've got a crazy <laughs> ass idea. What if, okay, I, I created this thing. I call it a casino. Yeah. I'm not certain. I'm not certain about the pronunciation. Yeah. We might go with casino, casino. I'm not sure. But guys, I've got this idea. And that's why, like, less than a year later, Bugsy Siegel is like, maybe we shouldn't be getting into fights with actors in Hollywood. Maybe we need to go someplace place else. Boom, that's when he in basically invents Vegas. <laughs> so I think that's why this is the, this story isn't well known. It's interesting because John Hall uh, has this huge, massive uh, Wikipedia page, and the Battle of the Balcony is literally one sentence. <laughs> His Wikipedia page. Yeah. That is interesting as shit. But, but yeah, one of the most infamous Hollywood fights in the history of Hollywood um, and at the center of the story is the star of the fucking film, The Beach Girls and the Monster. <laughs> have you yeah. have you ever even really heard of him before? John Hall? Yeah. Oh, no. I no, mean, I had never heard of him. I mean, that's that's really that in itself is really fucked up. For somebody who has two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, you know, and has had yeah. such a such a big career. I wouldn't say illustrious career, you know, yeah. but he's, let's see, who, actor-wise, 
what category would we put him in these days? Like, not somebody good, you know? Um, maybe that maybe that Russian guy who's in everything. I'm thinking maybe Travolta. Uh, they, yeah, maybe. I'm thinking Travolta because like Travolta's a big name, but he really hasn't been in very much good shit. Oh hell no! You know, I mean, he's got a handful of good movies, and that's no. it. You know. Yeah. So how does John Travolta get complete? Especially with this this brawl on the balcony, get completely wiped out of of consciousness. I have no idea. I'm, I, this is an amazing story, and I'm shocked that people don't know this. I'm thinking he be he may be huge in Universe X. Yeah, maybe. I when we did, and if you go back and listen to the episode where we're talking about the film The Beach Girls and the Monster, there is a one part in the show where I literally go, I'm not going to mention this, but I have a huge story, guys. Yes. <laughs> I'm not mentioning this right now, but guys, I have a huge story. It's called The Battle of the Balcony. I've already said too much. Yes. Yeah. But no, that, no I've been sitting on this, and, and it's been difficult because this is an amazing story. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's fun uncovering it, stuff like that it is it is it's crazy fun anyway that is it for this week's installment of steve's historical approximations now i'm not sure when we're doing steve's historical approximations again i'm not sure when it's returning maybe a week or two or 12 it's unclear but when we do come back with steve's historical approximations i've got another story lined up it has to do with Christianity, with American Family Radio, AFR Talk, a ministry of the American Family Association. Yes. And gays. That sounds awesome. Yeah, no, it's an amazing story. It's an amazing story. I don't know if it's uh, the Battle of the Balcony, but it's a good story. Yeah. I'll be looking forward to that. 